This is a follow-up video to a similar video I made for a castle pellet stove. Uh, there were some folks that were surprised how little that stove drew, how much electricity it drew during all modes of its operation. And uh, someone said that they had had a Harman that drew a lot more. And so I'm going to test my Harman to see if I also get a different result. I filled it up with about three quarters with pellets. Um, definitely, I'm leaving this door open right now so that the vacuum switch will allow the blowers to run, but not run the burner and the few, uh, not run the igniter and not run the um, the auger. So right now it's plugged in right over here and it's going through the the device, uh, the, um, it's kind of like a kilowatt advice, just it reads the, the electrical loads. Um, and right now it's drawing 0.5 amps. Let me see, is that amps? Watts, 0.5 watts, 0.55, um, while just sitting here. So unless there's something else running besides a LED, that's, what it draws with the LED. So if I turn on the switch here, turn this dial or rheostat to stove temperature, I turn that to stove temp, it will behave as if it's on. You'll see that the uh, blower is running and the uh, feed motor, it says it's running also but it won't turn. It won't turn because the door is open and that vacuum switch in the back is preventing it. But it's a good test here because now I can see what it, what the watts are with just the blowers running. Both blowers are running, the exhaust and the uh, combustion. And it is, I'm sorry, it's just the combustion blower, not the room blower. So it's 51 watts now just the combustion blower. Okay, so now I've closed the door. So the vacuum switch is, you know, it's feeling, it's sensing the vacuum now with it sealed. And I can hear the auger motor running. And the auger motor is, it, and also the, the heating element, the igniter is also running. So with the igniter running and the motor feeding pellets and uh, combustion blower as well, it's 343.4-ish watts. So the only thing that's not running right now is the room blower, which would return hot air to the room. And that won't come on until a thermostat uh, measures a uh, combination, I believe, of the stove temp. It's probably the stove temp. It's not measuring the air coming through here. It's just, it's going to measure the stove temp. And when the stove reaches a critical temp, it will then start blowing. All right, so now it's just a matter of letting it feed, waiting for it to ignite. All right, so the, the igniter has started some of the pellets. It's getting ready to ignite. Um, I've noticed with the, uh, the Harman, there's generally less smoke before it ignites. I see a little bit now. Yeah, see here comes the flames. And ever since I refurbished it, completely replaced all the seals, and just cleaned it well, especially the exhaust tubes. You might see a previous video I made of cleaning the interior exhaust tubes. The airflow through the stove is just so much better that the smoke doesn't accumulate. It's really important to keep it clean, uh, especially on the heat exchanger, because the heat exchanger in the back here behind these plates, if you don't clean that a couple of times, I, I tend to do it about three or four times a season. 
mainly because you're just wasting heat. The heat goes out the flue instead of getting exchanged through the heat exchanger and blown into your room. So to get most efficiency out of it, keep it clean. It's not hard to do. It's messy, but if you develop a technique, you will develop a technique that keeps it clean. All right, so let's see over here. Still have the, the power on, combustion blower is on, feed motor's on, and the igniter. The only one not on is the distribution blower, the room blower. And again, that won't come on until the temperature in the stove reaches a certain temperature. And then the power draw is the same, three, a little less, 341. It's been oscillating a little bit. Maybe getting up to 342 watts. I expect it to drop off quickly or suddenly. Once the temperature, once that temperature reaches this, the, the certain temperature, the, the critical temperature of to start the to start the uh, room distribution blower. I think simultaneously it turns off the igniter. And when the igniter goes off, this number should drop a lot because the igniter draws a lot. All right, it's hard to time it. I might not be lucky enough to catch that transition. We'll see. Okay, that was pretty quick. Uh, I feel air coming out of here already. So the internal temperature, it only took about two minutes tops, maybe even less than that. And I know that it, it reached that temperature because the air is coming out of here now and the draw is down to 130, 129 watts, which means the igniter has turned off. So with both blowers running, that means the igniter, I'm sorry, with both blowers running, meaning the combustion blower that's pulling air through the stove, it literally pulls the air through those coals and from uh, behind the stove, pulls it through those coals and heats up that, or produces a lot of oxygen there, pulls a lot of oxygen through there and that's why that's so golden hot there. And at the same time, there's this blower right here that's blowing air into the room. But already something is interesting. Okay, we're at 96 watts. That's interesting. Oh, now it's up to 128. Ah, that's the oscillation due to the auger not running continuously. So when the auger stops, that means the feeder, the pellet feeder, it drops to 93 watts, and that's the combination of the blowers. <clears throat> now, I don't have the blower on high. This is not blowing strongly at all, and I think it's gonna go up to a higher setting here in a minute. I've, we'll see, but I think this, when this stove gets even warmer, this blower is gonna blow stronger than it is now. We'll see. All right, so every time the auger runs and pushes pellets in, the watts over here goes up. Right now it's only at 83, but let's see what happens. I hear it running again. Yep, 115. All right, so the auger adds a bit, but then it stops because I have it set to a low setting. It's not very cold outside. I'm just, it's just a really wet, chilly day and our basement's cold so I'm just running it a bit to take the chill out of the basement dry it out a little bit too all right so I'm just gonna let it run for a while and when I when this 
up here when this uh, distribution blower is pushing really hot air out and blowing a little stronger. Take a look at the readings again. Okay, so the air coming out of the distribution vent here, very warm now. So uh, this would be like normal operation. Uh, it's burning well, feeding at a low setting still. We're at between two and three, at three right now. Yeah, the speed of the auger at three. Um, you can see right now the feed motor is not on. Now it is on, okay? So when it comes on, the, temp the power is still around 126, 127 fluctuates. And then after that stops, it will drop. I still hear it running and it just stopped. And it drops back to about 90, 89. Okay, and that's watts. So it looks like it'll be a low of 88 or so when it's running at a low setting. Like if, if this was a minus 10 degree day outside, I'd have this feed adjustment way up and, and I would turn the uh, stove temperature knob down here up also. I can also use room temp, but I need to get a new thermostat, um, a new wire, a new, a new sensor. So, so far everything is doing well, and it's true that this stove does draw more amps and watts than the castle. But this is also a more sophisticated stove. It has a lot more uh, computer and uh, settings down here that combinations of reading room temperature, stove temperature, feed rate adjustments, and all of those things can change what it's pulling, but it's, and of course the temperature setting. And I also think that the specifications of the blower, uh, both the combustion and the exhaust blower in this stove, I think they are higher spec, like um, higher cubic feet per minute. That's what I mean by that. So they're gonna be more powerful and therefore they draw more power. But it's not that much more. Um, right now the auger's running again, but it's gonna stop here. When it drops back to 80, 89, 90, that's about twice the, that's drawing about twice what my castle stove pulled. You know, right here we're at 85, when, everything, when it's just the, uh, the blowers, no auger. And this is um, about twice, almost twice as much power as the Castle draws, but the Castle is also a smaller stove and smaller BTU output. So I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a, a bad thing. It's just, uh, you know, it's like an economy car versus a car with a V8. Okay, so it's um, still really efficient. Someone was saying they were getting 700 watts or some really high number for watt draw. I'm not sure, maybe they wanna check their, their settings. Maybe it was set to milliwatts or something, but uh, it's much more efficient than, than that. So that's it really. No big surprise, well actually the big surprise is that this is still very efficient stove. It's not, yeah, 85 watts is what it, you know, it's less than a, you know, it's just like a light bulb, an old incandescent light bulb, and it produces a tremendous amount of heat. This will heat this whole house. Okay, so to wrap it up here, I'm showing you how loud this is from sitting out here on a couch. This is what it sounds like. It's much uh, less loud than when I had the phone right inside the unit almost. Uh, it's not really that bad. Depends really where you sit in the room. It's kind of a strange harmonic, but it's, it's pretty quiet.